Okay then my friends, so currently when we go to add a new review, we don't have any kind of validation. Um, we could type anything or nothing in these and it's still gonna accept that. Now this is not good, we need some kind of validation. Now to add this, we could spend a while writing our own validation functions, then calling those functions when the form submits and formulating error messages to show, etc, etc. But that could be a bit lengthy and take a fair amount of logic and code. And instead, I'll be using a package called Yup to help us with this validation. And it also works really well with Formic. So the first thing we need to do is install this package. So let's go to our other terminal and I'm gonna say npm install Yup, and press enter. So the way that this is going to work is that we're going to create a validation schema for our review form using Yup, and then we're going to pass that schema into our formic components. Now, a schema is just a set of rules defined inside an object, and that object is created by Yup for us. Now, the keys inside that object, they are going to be the different form fields, the title, the body and the rating. And the values to those keys are the validation rules. What does a value have to do to pass that validation? And then when we submit the form in the future, because we'll link our schema with this formic component, when we submit it, it's gonna look at those values and try and match it against our schema to make sure everything passes and only carry on with the submission if everything does pass. And if it doesn't, then we can return some kind of error. So. In this video, we're gonna focus on creating this schema and passing it in to Formic. Now, the first thing we need to do is import Yup at the top. So to do this, we'll say import asterisk, so that's everything, as Yup from Yup, okay? Now we can create our review schema, which I'm gonna do outside of the review form component. It doesn't need to be in there. So const review schema is gonna be equal to Yup dot object this is a method that creates us a yup object and inside here we define our schema so remember i said the keys of the different key value pairs inside the schema are going to be the different form fields so we have a title a body and a rating so let's do the title first of all that's the first key and then the value is going to be some kind of validation rule now to create this validation rule we say yup and then first of all i'm going to say string and that means that it must be a string so if title is not a string then it's going to fail now we can also add on another method and that is going to be required and that means that this field is required so if we don't enter anything then it's going to fail validation and i'm going to tack on another method called min and i'm going to pass in four and this means that the minimum length of this string field must be four characters so anything less and it's gonna fail validation. So that's pretty easy to create those validation rules rather than creating a function to do all that stuff ourselves. Now, the way I'm gonna write these different validation rules is by going onto a new line for every little rule. So we have, first of all, a string there, then required, then min, and that's so we don't get a long chain of rules that goes off the screen later on. But anyway, that is our title pretty much done. So we can do the next field now, which is gonna be the body. And again, we say yup, this is gonna be a string, so dot string, and then we're gonna say this is also required, so dot required, and again, I'm gonna use min to say the minimum length of this is gonna be eight. Now, in reality, it might be something more, but I really don't wanna start typing out lengthy articles in this tutorial, so I've just kept it at eight for now. And that will do for the body. So it has to be a string, it's required, so it can't be blank, and minimum length of eight characters. So the rating is gonna be slightly more difficult because for the rating, we want a number between one and five. So let's do this first of all. Rating, yup. And then I'm actually gonna say string again because by default, when we type something into an input field, it is automatically a string and not a number. So that's fine, it's also required. So required like so. And then down here, I'm gonna use a method called test. Now the test method allows us to define a function and that function is gonna take in the value, the rating value as a parameter. 
and we can run a little test on that function and return either true or false. So we can check that the value is actually within certain confines. If it returns true, it means that this field is valid. If it's false, it means it's not valid. So inside this test method, we define three things. First of all, some kind of name for the test. So it's going to be is num one to five. You can call that what you want. And the second parameter is also a string. And this is any kind of feedback message that you want to provide to a user if this test fails. So I'm going to say rating must be a number one to five. OK, so if it fails, we're going to eventually provide that validation error to the user. And the third parameter is the function which takes in the value of the rating. And inside this function, we can return either true or false. I'm going to return a statement which is pass int and we pass in the value. So first of all, we're passing in a string which could be five still and we're passing that into an integer, right? And I'm going to check is that less than six? because a rating can go up to five only. But that's not the only thing I want to check. So ampersand, double ampersand to check something else as well. And pass int, passing the value again, that must also be greater than zero, okay? So only if the rating is an integer between one and five, is this going to return true? If it doesn't return any of those, it's going to return false. So then it fails the validation, okay? So that is pretty much it. We have done now our review schema for the three different fields, and we can just pass this into our formic form. So we do that down here inside the formic component, and all we do is use a prop called validation schema. And this accepts the review schema like so. So when we submit our form, it's going to look at the validation schema and it's going to match it against our different fields. So we have a title field, a body field and a rating field. And we have a title validation, a body validation and also a rating validation. So it's going to look at those and try and match our values against them. If the values pass all of the validation, then it's going to continue with the submission and it's going to run this function. If it doesn't, then it won't. It won't let us fully submit the form, okay? And instead, what it's going to do is populate some errors in the formic props, and we'll see that in the next video. But for now, what I'm going to do is save this. But before I do, I've just seen that this thing up here is still grayed out, and that's because it has a capital. I don't want this to have a capital because we've not given it a capital down there. It doesn't really matter whether you do or don't, but just make sure they're the same. I'm going to save that now. And what I need to do is restart the current process because we installed a new package. So let me cancel out of this and run expo start again. I'm going to also cancel this app over here. And then in my new developer tools, I'm going to run on an Android device. And hopefully we should see the updated app over here. Okay, so if I try now to add a new item, I'm just going to try and submit as is. And it doesn't let me do that. It did let me do that before. If I type in just two letters here and one there and submit, again, doesn't let me do it. Now, if I type in five letters here, which is over four, it passes the validation and I do a load of letters here. And I also do a number here, submit it. Now it does let me do it. So it's only letting me fully submit the form if our values pass the validation schema we defined right here. OK, so that's how easy it is to implement some validation with Yup inside a formic form. Now, in the next video, we're going to see how to actually give some feedback to a user, because if we try to submit our form and it runs through the schema and it decides it's not valid, then Yup is going to provide some error messages to formic, which are then attached to these props. So we can then output those error messages to the user so they can correct what they've done wrong. So we'll take a look at how to do that in the next video.